guys hello and welcome to the liberal tv network today is july 15 2024 and we are in central town today we want to bring you some breaking news and major happenings around town so this is how i uh, maduna street looked like this morning i'm francis k Dikopa coming to your life keep following liberal tv network as we update you regarding a uh, major happenings in the country so just to let you know uh the most talk about madame musu gloria scott uh case is to actually start tomorrow which will be on july 16 2024 we all know what actually happened during uh, uh, during the time she was sentenced to life imprisonment, and during the time uh, the case was actually ongoing, what led to the situation? So uh, immediately when she was sentenced to life imprisonment uh, by you know criminal court, uh, definitely her lawyers came in and said that oh uh, they are going to file in for an appeal, and that appeal was filed in. Fortunately, uh, the appeal was actually heard and accepted by the Supreme Court. So tomorrow, the most talk about, you know, case going to start. So if you are following Liberian TV Network, we just want to let you know that Madame Musu Goroska, I uh, served as former senator for Liberia, and she also served as a former chief justice. And later on, she was one of the key opposition lawyers for uh, the Unity Party, Liberty Party, and other opposition party by then. So, you know, she was involved in uh, most of the activities within our country. So in another development, we all know exactly what happened during the course of the weekend when President Weir, uh, former President Weir came to country. Uh, you know, by according to, you know, uh, information that we got and other media outlets were there, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things were happening. In fact, you could see it on the social media, you could see it on other, you know, uh, media platform. Uh, there was state security, especially the armed forces of uh, Liberia and other, you know, uh, security apparatus were deployed at the ARA uh, IA. Uh, yeah, when President Weir was coming. So, this actually raised a serious concern among citizens in the country and other uh, meaningful stakeholders, saying that what is the essence for President Weir uh, coming into the country for, you know, a huge state security to be deployed at uh, the RIA. In fact, uh, President Weir, since uh, after the election, he, uh, he has traveled, I think, like two or three times, and he came back to Liberia. But then, uh, during his previous travel, absolutely there was no state security deployed at the uh, RIA. But then, this gone weekend, when he was coming, there was a state security deployed. And so, citizen was like, you know, uh, providing that accession. And in fact, that led to a serious tension at RIA. A uh, partisan of the CDC said they want to have full access to their president. And you know they were some of them were stopped in fact it created a serious tension uh between the partisan and the you know the state security so people were saying about president buck i said i know business as usual and in fact what why should president buck even think of you know deploying state security especially the armed forces the, the the army right to the RIA, where in nothing like war or something is ongoing on people were actually just going to see how best they can actually, you know, pay courtesy, you know, uh, courtesy to their former president. And in fact, Honorable Musa Hassan Berete write on his Facebook page that President Weir is now an undari citizen. And in fact, he is engaged into active politics. So why is it that the government is trying to, you know, political size everything the government is trying to, you know, do things that are not really right? The government is trying to, you know, uh, place 
that kind of you know caricature picture on the CDC partisan as if you know they are troublemakers or as if they are not law abiding. So these are exceptions then coming from keys uh, permanent state actors within the country and also uh, undirect citizen within the country. So guys, if you are following, I'm Francis K D Kopa coming to you live. We are on Clay Street trying to show you how by uh, central Morava definitely look like so I uh, <coughs> there is there is this information uh, saying that US 24.7 million in LRD uh, 600 uh, 621.9 million uh, was spent without no evidence so this information came from the Verita newspaper. Uh, this is definitely relating to the EPA's, you know, EPA director. Uh, he been held in that institution for the past six months to so eight months, and then this information has come out. Uh, according to the Verita uh, news outline, says that they are trying to see how best they can dig properly to get all factual information regarding such. So it says, it also says that you know, President Barkai said, I uh, no business as usual, but it's unfortunate to actually see uh, things going as the way it used to be. People are doing things, you know, head and scatter, especially where in President Barkai I support, uh, I supersede all of the you know, these activities and the EPA directly work with the president. So, why is it that you know, there should be a huge corruption allegation? you know on that kind of entity that the president is actually associated to and also uh, according to information uh, regarding the media house uh, the media scape in library saying that yeah there are less media uh, there are less female in the media sector so according to a report coming from the women voices newspaper says that there were you know statistics collected doing uh, this year, especially between March to April, where in, in the news production, especially when it comes to the media activities in Liberia, you have 17% of female uh, in the media landscape. So this is raising a line and they are saying or, uh, you know, calling, uh, especially providing this message to all media institutions to see how best they can actually incorporate, you know, a uh, female into all of these activities. At least there should be gender, you know, balance. There should be gender sensitive. Fortunately for us, we are Library TV Network. Uh, the scale is really balanced. We have two male, two uh, two female. Yeah, so we are four in number. So these are things that the women voices and especially FIJA, the Female Journalist Association of Liberia, uh, want to see that. Oh yes, indeed, there should be this, you know skill level when it comes to employment within the media sector where you can have more female uh, also there is this serious issue so just to let you know we just hit the broad street and this is the way leading to capital bypass so if you are following i'm um, francis k d couple coming to you live so keep following the broad tv network as we bring you live coverage also i represented the tower wongo uh, there is this issue says that on uh, front page Africa and other media outlet says that representative Wongo US 300k back uh, back mail against Speaker Kofa backfire backtrack and maze uh, monetary condemn uh, condemnation and other things right so there is this information you know, we all know that representative Wongo is district number nine representative in Nima County. So Representative Wombo has been one of the key convidants to Speaker Kofa. In fact, he was one of those persons actually, you know, cheering for Speaker Kofa election and wanting Speaker Kofa to actually win election in the house. Unfortunately, Speaker Kofa won the election and he is currently serving as the chair on foreign affair at the lower house. So, you know, he has been very close. In fact, sometimes he deputized the uh, he deputized the deputy speaker. In fact, he sometimes, he most often with the speaker, go to the speaker office, do everything in common. But according to Front Page Africa, Verita News Online, and other media uh, outlets saying that there is this stuff about I know Judas Akaros wherein 
when Jesus Christ was you know betrayed this is what ongoing and in fact there is this information in the media outlet saying that Representative Tawombo says that Speaker Kofa is corrupt Speaker Kofa, Kofa is not actually transparent and a lot more in fact uh, there is also this information coming up that you know the United Party led government has given him and other lawmakers some money to ensure that Speaker Kofa is removed as Speaker from the House of Representatives. So, guys, uh, these are current things happening. So, immediately when he says Speaker Kofa is corrupt, Speaker Kofa is this and that, uh, definitely Speaker Kofa came to revert to his statement. He responded and said that, oh, what you are doing uh, is not true. In fact, is uh, your statement is untrue. Your That is unfair. And, you know, that information was clarified by the speaker so people are saying that but we don't really expect this from him because he and the speaker have been close and he should not be one of those guys actually you know honor mind the speaker uh shape of speaker kofa so also there is this information on front page africa in the investigative newspaper the probate newspaper and other media online says that chinese uh, chinese mining tycoon other indicted for defrauding liberian government of us 48.8 million so that uh one of the major guy he is called gao Feng, commonly known as barry and other people call him as the real minister so this uh situation is currently taking place in bapolo we all know that you know there are a lot of illegal mining activities going on in liberia and other citizens are raising concern. Why is it that a Chinese national will be in Liberia, taking Liberia mineral, and then he is not actually moving properly, or things are not being done properly in line with the Liberian government? This cannot be done in China or other part of the world. In fact, they should be uh, definitely prosecuted. The law should take a course. But let's see. Uh, let's wait and see if definitely what's going to be the outcome. This situation is currently taking place in Bapolo, the western region. Uh, like, uh, it is it is for in the western region part of Liberia. So these are things. And of recent, also in Bapolo, you know, there was five employees of Ministry of Labor that were uh, they were actually fired by the Ministry of Labor for you know invading into some mining activities in that western region. And currently, as we speak, the case is ongoing. So also to let you know, Western Clauser, you know, why uh, permit has been definitely seized. So they said, the Bakai led government said they're going to investigate, you No, know, they're going to investigate, they're going to ensure that proper things are done before they can actually resume operation in bombing country. We all know Western Cluster. Western Cluster came into being long since, but then they reactivated their they reactivated their working during the then president we are region and but then there were a lot of protests there were a lot of allegations there were a lot of things said that the western cluster is not actually going in line with the mda henceforth they should definitely shut down their operation so today as we speak uh, they have shut down their operation uh, things are not actually good in bombing but President Bokai said he want to see the needful thing be done. So guys, if you are following these, are uh, a lot of things just happening. And also to let you know, I uh, you know this Honorable Kimia issue is still ongoing. Honorable Kimia, a uh, former foreign affairs minister to uh, former former foreign affairs minister of Liberia, and so Honorable Kimia is former foreign affairs minister of Liberia and also former U.S. ambassador to the U.S. So there is this information uh, according to other media outlet like uh, Front Page Africa, uh, Verita Online News and a lot more that that uh, Honorable Kimia is to be assigned as the country rep in Sierra Leone but then the United Party government is trying to actually you know uh, do things that are not right so they are trying to honor my according to the newspaper they are trying to honor my the, the appointment of honorable Kimia. but then they'll see they'll wait and see what's going to happen and in today's last edition as we speak we have lipo uh lipo is the liberal intellectual uh, inter intellectual property uh, office so lipo uh, is currently you know in geneva attending the war Geneva, you know, war Geneva, uh, let me say the war uh, intellectual property, you know, convention. And that delegation is being headed by the director of Lipo Manangame Koboy and her deputy Clarence Ko. 
So guys, uh, Liberia is really making some airway and people are appreciating them for their level of effort since, you know, they came into Bain. Uh, now it has gone like 15, let me say it has gone like 6 or 7 months and they are doing extremely well at that entity. Uh, people are saying that our entity used to be dormant but at least today the entity is moving on good. So guys, if you are following Liberia TV Network, I'm Francis K. Decopo. You can go on our YouTube page and also facebook page like comment and share our you know news outlet we want to say from monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday you can follow this platform we'll update you on a daily basis regarding major happiness in liberia thank you for following